Trey in Deer Park, Texas. Do you think Steve Sarkeesian's approach to the transfer portal is the best way for top programs to manage their roster, i.e. not letting players return once they enter the portal? Uh, I had a little league coach once upon a time who told me, I don't have a ton of rules. Now, it was a very militaristic organization, our little league team, the Catala Mudcats. We all got drafted as nine-year-olds, and we all uh, took a 1-15 in record our nine-year-old year. The next three years, we won the league, and we, we ended up doing some things that teams from Harris County don't really do because we knew how to play. Well, ironically, it was not a team with a ton of rules, and yet, we, like I said, we, we operated almost in a militaristic fashion. We ran bases a certain way. We warmed up a certain way. We carried ourselves a certain way. Uh, and, and the reason was because of just inherent fear of the coaches. Even though it never had to be exhibited, it never had to be demonstrated on us. Uh, one of those coaches being my father should be noted. And so anyway, one of those coaches, my father, one day told me when we were driving home from practice, he said, I don't have a lot of rules on the team. You don't ever hear me give these rules and say, now, if you do this or you do that, then this is going to happen. And he said, do you know why that is? Because I think something had happened uh, with, with another team in the league. I can't remember what it was, but I'll tell you exactly what it was. A kid went on spring break and that coach had had a rule that if their players go on spring break, then they're not playing the rest of the year or something like that. It wasn't on our team. It was someone else's team. It was something like that to where they, di they didn't change the schedule. Now in Little League up there, they, they just give you the week off that coincides with the spring break for the public education system. Well, anyway, he said, you know why I don't have a lot of those rules? Because you have to enforce them when you have them. He said the best way to avoid getting yourself in a mess is to have as, as few rules as possible, but have a great culture. Because if you have a great culture, you don't have to define every single rule. Guys just go about their business the right way. But if you do have a lot of those rules, someone's going to break them. And the worst thing you can do is have a bunch of these rules, and then one of your best players breaks the rule. Because what are you going to do? At that point... What kind of corner have you voluntarily backed yourself into as a coach? To a certain extent, this stuff is unavoidable, but to a much larger extent, it is avoidable. And the other thing you see sometimes is when a backup will do something, like let's say a backup breaks curfew, you suspend him for the next two weeks because you really want to flex that authoritarian muscle. Well, that's all well and good, but when you're starting wide receiver that has 1,100 receiving yards already by week eight, does the same thing the next week, what do you do? Because you're certainly not going to suspend him for the next two weeks, but you kind of have to because you already set the rule, you set the precedent. So I am saying all that to build up to this. Steve Sarkeesian has a policy that if you go in the transfer portal, you're gone. Whether you find another home or not, you're gone. That's okay. If that is the stance he wants to take, I'm fine with it. What I think I would do is I may have that policy like internally. I, I don't know if I would stay. I don't know. To each his own. I don't know if I would state it publicly because what I do, if I don't state it publicly, I still reserve the right to not take you back. Like I still reserve that right. But what I also can do is like if Xavier Worthy were to all of a sudden randomly pop up in the portal and then come to me three days later and say, hey, I changed my mind. I don't want to be in the portal. I do not want to look at Xavier Worthy in the eye and say, too bad, you're out of here. Already cleaned your locker out. He's my best receiver. I don't want to do that. So, yeah, it's, it's always fun to be heavy-handed. And like I said, if this is Sark's approach, it's his approach. And if he sticks to it, and I have no reason to believe he won't, he'll stick to it. I think also it's a lot safer to have this policy at Texas where you're probably going to be a transfer portal destination for good players, more so than, than your best players leaving. You know, maybe, maybe, Texas, maybe like Texas State or North Texas is the worst place to have this policy. But yeah, I, I, it's interesting. Everybody's policy is different right now. 
You got Dabo's policy of just rarely doing it, period. You got Sark's policy of if you go in, you're not coming back. You got other guys that really don't have public policies, and even then you don't know what they're telling guys behind the scenes. Um, so who knows, man? Policy's a funny thing. And also, to go back to the Little League story right quick. So we, we were playing that team because we had two teams in our same little community, uh, and, the, and then that we were under the overarching Harris County Little League uh, sort of umbrella. And we just completely skull-dragged that team. They beat us up the first year, and we skull-dragged them the next three years. It culminated in a 42-3 to win that season. Uh, and frankly, I, oh, frankly again, I don't think that kid was worth 39 runs, but it was a, it was a tough scene either way.